Hello everyone, I'll be discussing the case of People vs. Alicia, decided in 1980, decided and bank. So this is in relation to Article 160 of the Revised Penal Code, the commission of another crime during service of penalty imposed for another offense and its penalty. So the issue in this case is whether Alicia and Bangayan are guilty under Article 160 of the Revised Penal Code, Hence, mitigating circumstances cannot be appreciated. So the facts of the case are as follows. On May 1972, in the new believed prison, accused Arturo Alicia and Victor Bangayan, while then confined at the said institution, each armed with improvised deadly weapons, assaulted, attacked, and stabbed four prisoners serving final sentences in the same institution, while then unarmed and unable to defend themselves. The regional trial court found Alicia and Pangayan guilty beyond reasonable doubt for the crime of murder, sentenced them to suffer the penalty of death, likewise guilty of frustrated murder, both with indemnity to the heirs of the victim. The case was for automatic review of the Supreme Court. Alicia and Bangayan's counsel contended that the trial court failed to consider certain mitigating circumstances which are the voluntary surrender to the authorities and execution of statements admitting their participation and that both Alicia and Bangayan pleaded guilty, which should, have, which should have entitled a lower penalty to Alicia and Bangayan. So the Supreme Court held that Alicia and Bangayan are guilty under Article 160 of the RPC and the mitigating circumstance of voluntary surrender and plead of guilty cannot be appreciated. So Article 160 of the Revised Penal Code provides that any person who shall commit a felony after having been convicted by final judgment before beginning to serve such sentence all while serving the same shall be punished by the maximum period of the penalty prescribed by law for the new felony. So Article 160 of the RPC provides for quasi-recidivism, which is a special aggravating circumstance which imposes the maximum of the penalty for new offense. So, it makes no def difference for the purpose of the effect of quasi-recidivism under Article 160 of the Revised Penal Code whether the crime for which an accused is serving sentence, the first felony, at the time of the commission of the offense charge, falls under the said code or under special law. Quasi-recidivism is punished with more severity than recidivism proper, because the aggravating circumstance of recidivism, as any other aggravating circumstance, may be offset by a mitigating circumstance present in the commission of the crime. Whereas, in a case of quasi-recidivism, the maximum degree of the penalty prescribed by law for the crime committed should always be imposed irrespective of the presence of any mitigating circumstance. So, in this case, let's take a, take a look at the elements in the application. So the first element is present here, that the offender was already convicted by final judgment of one offense. So in the case at war, both appellants Arturo Alicia and Victor Bangayan were serving sentence for robbery by virtue of final judgment when they committed the new felony. In fact, they were in the prison believed. The second element is also present, that he committed a new felony before beginning to serve such sentence or serving the same. Because both Alicia and Bangayan here committed felonies while serving sentence which are murder and frustrated murder. Furthermore, murder and frustrated murder are punishable under the revised penal code. Hence, they are a felony. So therefore, Alicia and Bangayan are guilty under Article 160 of the RPC, Commission of Another Crime, during service of penalty imposed for another offense. And the existence of quasi-recidivism renders smooth the argument, argument of counsel that the trial court failed to consider certain mitigating circumstances which should have entitled the appellants to a lower penalty. Although the counsel, the official of Alicia and Bangayan, is correct in her statement that after the commission of the crime, Alicia and Bangayan voluntarily surrendered to the authorities and executed statements admitting their participation, and that both pleaded guilty to the offense, those circumstances notwithstanding, the imposition of the supreme penalty is in order, as again, mitigating circumstances cannot off offset the special aggravating circumstance of quasi-recidivism.
However, in this case, for lack of votes, because this was decided en banc, the penalties of Alicia and Bangayan were reduced to reclusion perpetua. Now, uh, for further information, there are actually four forms of repetition. So we have recidivism, we have reiteration or habituality, we have multi-recidivism or habitual delinquency, and we have quasi-recidivism. So what is the difference between recidivism versus quasi-recidivism? So recidivism is provided in Article 14, Paragraph 9 of the RPC, whereas quasi-recidivism is provided in Article 160 of the Revised Penal Code. So in recidivism, the convictions of the offender are for crimes embraced in the same title of the Revised Penal Code. However, in the, in the quasi recidivism, the convictions are not for crimes embraced in the same title of the Revised Penal Code, as long as the second crime is a felony. In recidivism also, there is no time fixed between the former conviction and the last conviction. However, in quasi recidivism, uh, the offenders here must be convicted by final judgment and shall commit a new felony before beginning to serve such sentence or while serving the same. Recidivism also is a generic aggravating circumstance, which means that it can be offset by a mitigating circumstance. However, quasi-recidivism is a special aggravating circumstance and has, hence cannot be offset by any mitigating circumstance that are common. Quasi-recidivism versus habitual delinquency. So, quasi-recidivism here, as long as convicted by a subsequent felony, this is present. Whereas in habitual delinquency, crimes here are specified, which are robbery, theft, staffa, falsification, serious and less serious physical injuries. In quasi-recidivism, the offender here must be convicted by final judgment and he shall commit a new felony before beginning to serve such sentence or while serving the same. While in habitual delinquency, the conviction of any specified crimes must take place within 10 years from the conviction or release. In quasi-recidivism, conviction second time of a felony is enough. While, while in habitual delinquency, conviction must be third time or more. So quasi-recidivism versus reiteration. So in quasi-recidivism, the offender here shall commit a new felony before beginning to serve such sentence or while serving the same. While in reiteration, provided in Article 14, Paragraph 10 of the Revised Penal Code, the offender here has previously been punished, which means that he must serve or he must have served a sentence. In quasi-recidivism, this is committed as long as there is previous conviction in a subsequent conviction of a felony. In reiteration, the first offense must have had a greater or equal penalty or two or more offenses with lighter penalty. So that's it for my discussion. And we should take note that out of the four forms of repetition, quasi-recidivism uh, has the highest uh, additional penalty because this is a special aggravating circumstance. And that's it. Thank you for listening.